Let me show you how to do keyword research this year. Spoiler alert, you're not going to need any SEO tools. All you need is Google and some common sense. Without wasting any more of your time, let's jump into it. By the way, make sure to sign up to my free blogging masterclass. I've left a link to it in the description. In this masterclass, I teach you everything you need to know to start a successful blog this year. So the keyword research is a process that aims to find what people type in search engines like Google. So basically it is a process that you're going to do every time before you write a blog post to understand what kinds of keywords and what kinds of topics people are searching for in your niche so that you can target those and get more visitors to your website. The goal of a keyword research is simple. It is to learn what and why people type in search engines, understanding the search competition, and learn what it takes to actually have a chance for ranking high for those keywords. One thing I must mention though, is that keyword research is actually much easier than what it sounds. It involves absolutely no technical skills, no heavy data analysis, no mathematics, no paid SEO tools, nothing of that sort. All you need is Google and a bit of common sense and perhaps five to 10 minutes of your time. So why on earth would you do keyword research? Why can't you just go ahead and write a blog post or a page and target for any kinds of keywords or random topics? Well, the main point of a blog or a website is to get visitors to it. And unfortunately, these days people don't really visit those random web pages. So for instance, a blog post like my dog's favorite color is blue is unfortunately not going to cut it. Instead, those topics should be something that is in demand. In other words, something that people type in Google. So for example, a much better blog post topic would be something like how to lose weight. But it's not that simple either. Surely there are tons of people searching for topics like how to lose weight every single month. But the topic has also a ton of coverage. That is, there are hundreds of thousands of blog posts and web pages that already target that keyword. So basically, if you have a brand new website or blog, that is way out of your reach. In other words, there's no way for you to rank high for a search query like how to lose weight. But this is where keyword research comes in handy. It not only helps you understand what people type in Google in your niche, but it also gives you an idea of how much competition there is or whether there's actually anybody searching for that topic. And also it will give you a great idea of what kind of a blog post to write if you want to rank high for that keyword. So what? So what happens if you don't do this keyword research before you write? Well, the lack of a proper keyword research might lead to very, very slow growth of your blog. It is possible to write tens or even hundreds of quality blog posts that get absolutely no visitors if you have not done proper keyword research. I always love to use tennis as my example in every video. So for example, let's say that you're running a local tennis business and you want to build brand awareness. The way to do this is that you start a website and write content to it to rank it high on Google and other search engines. Now, if you trust your gut feeling, the first blog post that you write would probably be something like how to play tennis or how tennis scoring system works or such. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with those topics. Those are definitely topics that you should indeed cover with your website. But there is a whole bunch of competition for that kind of search phrases. So if you have a new blog and you only write, let's say, a couple of those blog posts, those will never rank high. It's simply because there is way too much competition going on. Instead, you should start with something way more specific, such as how to measure the string tension of a tennis racket. And the way to build your blog is to target those long tail key phrases or keywords at first and try to rank for those where there is not that much competition, but there are still people searching for those topics. And then you can start targeting those higher competition keywords once you have built some authority and trust in your website and once you have covered those very niche specific and very, very niche topics. And by the way, always keep this one thing in mind. If you want to build a successful blog, you need to write a ton of content to it. This is because Google wants to see that your website is a credible and a trustworthy resource in your niche. So it would be very silly to do really careful keyword research and spend a couple of days writing a single blog post. Instead, what you want to do is spend like five or 10 minutes doing keyword research and then a couple of hours writing your blog posts. The fact that you need to cover a ton of topics in your niche 
is called topical authority. The more you cover your niche and the more content you write about your niche, the higher the topical authority. And by the way, there's no way to measure it, it's just a concept. Nonetheless, the higher the topical authority is, the better the chances for your blog posts to rank high. So write a ton of content and cover your niche from A to Z. This is the only way to build a website that has a great chance for ranking high on Google. It's not those individual keywords, but it's the fact that your site covers the niche from A to Z. So even though I just told you that a keyword like how to lose weight is a bad idea to write about because there's too much competition, that's actually not indeed the case. You should probably still write about that keyword if it's in your niche or if it's a must-have topic in the space you're targeting. But the time that you should spend on that topic is what actually matters here. So if you're targeting those very, very high competition keywords, just write a quick blog post that is not even meant to rank high, but just to cover it and just to provide the additional value to your audience and give your take on that topic. So for instance, if I ran a local gym and I wanted to include the how to lose weight blog post, I would probably spend like 30 minutes on writing that. I would add a couple of images, my own unique take on that topic, but I would not even try to compete with those top level pages that are ranking high. So all I'm trying to say here is that if you're targeting very, very high competition key phrases or keywords, that doesn't make probably any sense to spend more than like 30 or 60 minutes on those blog posts. But if you are targeting those low competition and more specific key phrases that you actually have a chance to rank high for, it might make sense to spend a couple of hours on each blog post. And that is exactly where you're going to use keyword research for. So you're going to identify what kinds of keywords you actually have a chance to rank high for and what kinds of keywords are way out of your reach. There are five common keyword types that people type in on search engines like Google. First keyword type is navigational. Navigational keywords are the keywords that people type on Google if they want to find a specific page on a specific domain that they already know. So let's say there's a local tennis club that has a website called tennisleo.fi. Now, if somebody wants to find a coach from that particular website, they might type into Google something like tennis leo tennis coaches. So the people do navigational searches when they already know that a site exists, but they want to find particular information from that site. And by the way, these are the keywords that you typically are not going to go for. So these are instead something that just highlight that there's probably a ton of brand recognition already for a website, but you as a blogger are probably not going to target these types of keywords that often. At least I haven't. These keywords are more useful for the business owner. So for example, in the tennis law example, the owner of Tennis Leo would find it insightful that people are actually searching for coaches from their website and they might actually make business decisions based on that kind of data. So the next keyword type is informational. And this is the type of keyword that you're going to target most of the time. People that type in informational keywords to search engines are curious to learn something new or solve their problem. For instance, informational keywords could be something like how to tie shoelaces or how to lose weight or how to start playing tennis. Most of the content that you're going to write will fall into this informational category. Targeting informational keywords is beneficial for multiple reasons. First of all, those allow you to build brand awareness to your services or products. And also usually these types of keywords has a ton of search volume. So there might be millions of people searching for informational keywords in your niche. And then the best part is that you're actually going to help people in your niche. So for example, if you write something like how to play tennis, you're actually going to provide value to people that are in your target audience. And last but not least, you're also going to build trust. So if you become a key player in your niche with a ton of informational free content that actually solves problems, people will love your website. And just keep in mind that these informational search queries or keywords don't have any buying intent usually. Thus, an informational blog post is not the right place to do promotion. Of course, if you want to maximize your profits, you can link those informational posts to those commercial or transactional posts that I will talk to you in a bit. The third keyword type in line is commercial keywords. This is where the money comes in. When you're a blogger, affiliate marketer, or business owner, 
These are the keywords that are your golden nuggets. And basically those commercial keywords are what people are actually searching for with credit cards in their hands. The searchers are already aware of their needs and now they are just looking for the right kind of a product or a service. Examples of commercial keywords include something like best tennis rackets for kids, tennis racket A versus tennis racket B, tennis racket A alternatives, tennis racket A review. For instance, I make like 90% of my income from these commercial keywords. Now the fourth keyword type is transactional. These transactional keywords are the ones that people type in when they're actually going to make a purchase. So they already know their needs and they already know a product that they want to buy. For instance, transactional keywords could be something like Photoshop discount code or buy Bose NC700 HP. These topics are very, very lucrative and highly converting because in these topics, people are only a couple of clicks away from completing a purchase. But I must mention though, that these types of keywords are much harder to target than those commercial ones. This is because if you search for these kinds of transactional keywords, you're actually usually going to land directly on the landing page of the product that you're looking for. So for example, if you consider something like Photoshop discount code, you're actually probably going to find that Photoshop ranks at the number one spot on Google. And even if you manage to rank like number two or three, you would get absolutely no clicks because people will already know that it's Photoshop and they will click on the first result unless they do it by accident and click on the second or the third one. Plus there is a ton of competition for these kinds of key phrases so it might be hard to make it to top 10. So these types of keywords are mostly useful for business owners. For example, if you were the owner of Photoshop, that might be insightful for you to know that people are searching for free trials or discount codes on Photoshop. But as a blogger, you're not going to target these types of keywords that often because of the competition. And last but not least, the fifth keyword type is a local keyword. These are typically transactional or commercial keywords that people type in to find a solution or product or service close to them. For example, tennis courts near me or tennis coaches near me. These types of keywords are useful and critical for local businesses and services such as event promoters, real estate agents or whatnot. Now that you understand what keyword types exist, Let's actually move on to doing the keyword research. And before we move on, I would like to quickly point out that using SEO tools here would make absolutely no sense, yet many tutorials will recommend you using one. So even though there are seemingly those wonderful SEO tools that show you how many times a particular keyword is searched for and how easy it would be to rank high for that key phrase, those tools are only based on predictions and usually they are miles and miles off. So much so that I would never pay for any one of those tools. For instance, I just checked one of my websites that has like 5,000 visitors per month. And the one of the SEO tools, I'm not going to give you any names here, but it said that it has 200,000 monthly visitors, which is way, way, way off. Now, even if you had a magic SEO tool that would exactly tell how many times a particular keyword is searched for every month, you would still not find it that useful. This is because you will never know for how many keywords you are going to rank for. So if you write a single blog post that targets a single keyword, you're actually going to rank for hundreds or even thousands of keywords because you're not just writing for robots, but you're actually solving problems for people and using your own language and unique words that might start ranking on their own. And basically what this means is that there is absolutely no way for you to know how many times your blog post is going to be read, even if you knew exactly what types of search volumes these keywords have. So let's not waste our time or money on those worthless SEO tools, but let's use free tools and common sense instead. So now let's actually move on to the keyword research stuff. Google is your best friend when it comes to doing keyword research. They will give you a ton of free data that you might not know that exists. So doing keyword research starts from a blank page. In other words, you don't even know the keywords that you want to target in your niche. Here's where you can use Google suggestions. So let's say you're in the tennis niche. What you would do is you would open up Google and type in tennis, how to, and then see what Google suggests. These are all keywords that people are actually searching for every month. In other words, these are great keyword candidates 
that you might want to target and write blog posts about. I noticed that not all keywords in this list are actually worth targeting. Some of the keywords are very competitive and you will never have a chance to rank high for those. I will show you how to validate those keywords in just a bit, but before that, I will show you a bunch of more strategies you can use to find those keywords in the first place. So whenever you search for something on Google, you can also see those people also ask sections where there are some questions. If you didn't already guess it, these questions are actually keywords you can target. Heck, you can even add these as your subheadings to your blog post if you have already done your keyword research and are ready to write. This is because these are questions that people ask that are directly related and relevant to your topic. And very, very similar to the people also ask section, you can also find those related searches on Google by doing a Google search and scrolling all the way down to the bottom of the search results page. These are also great keywords that you might want to target. And last but not least, you can also use the site operator on Google search if you want to find those amazing keywords to target from your competitor's website. So before you do this, find a competitor or competing web page that you want to inspect. And then open up Google and type in site colon and then follow that up with the domain of your competitor. This shows you all the pages and blog posts that are indexed and that are ranking on Google on your competitor's website. Just scroll down the results and see what kinds of keywords or blog post topics the competitor has written about. But just remember that don't use this strategy to blindly choose a target keyword. Not all the blog posts are worth writing about, even if your competitor has written about those. Those might be too competitive. And also there are those news articles and some updates that are completely irrelevant but might still rank accidentally on Google. I will talk to you about the validation process in just a few seconds. Another very similar way to find blog post topics is by analyzing your competitor's sitemap. So you can always just open up your competitor's blog and just find those topics or keywords from there. But you can also do this much more easily by accessing the sitemap, which lists all the blog posts in one single long form file. So most of the websites online have a publicly available sitemap that lists all the URLs to the blog posts and pages that they have ever published and that appear on Google. So just type in your competitor's domain name followed by sitemap.xml. And to find the blog post sitemap, that is all the blog posts of your competitor's website, just open up the post-sitemap.xml. This way you can see what kinds of topics your competitors have written about. But this is just all about convenience. Of course, you can just go ahead and find your competitors archives or blog page and find those blog post topics or keywords from there. But what I really love about this sitemap thing is that it actually shows all the blog posts in the same page so those are very easy to check instead of like clicking through all the pages in the archives page. So now let's actually consider what types of keywords you should go for. So to put it short, target long tail keywords at first. So instead of targeting something like best exercises at home, target for something way more specific, such as best weight bearing exercises for seniors at home. So those are very long and specific search queries that only a few people are searching for, but has pretty much no competition. Basically, for a brand new website, there is a much greater chance to rank high for a more specific key phrase than those competitive keywords, such as how to lose weight or home exercises or such. And it's actually all about numbers. So if you cover a very specific topic, there's actually a chance that if you put in like one hour, two hours, three hours, you have probably spent more time on that topic than anyone else on the entire internet prior to you. And that is a good thing, because the way to rank high on Google is to actually write those complete guides that solve the problem in a better way than anyone else has ever done. So you always want to write the best piece of content about that topic. And it's easier to start with those long tail search phrases where there's actually not that much competition and those blog posts are usually very short and very, very poorly written. But how on earth do you know how many times your blog post is going to be read? Well, there is unfortunately absolutely no way for you to tell that in advance. Only time will tell and you will only learn that once the blog post ranks high, if it ever does. So basically your blog post might rank for 10 keywords or 10,000 keywords, each with a varying amount of search volume. So instead of worrying about how many times your blog post is going to be read, you should actually only verify 
if there is search volume or not. And this is pretty straightforward to do. You can use Google once again. So Google has this free tool called Google Trends. You can use this to track the trends of your keyword. And no, you're not going to learn how many times a keyword is searched, but you're going to see how the keyword is performing. You can find seasonality spikes and upward trends or downward trends and all kinds of interesting data about that keyword. And if there's at least some data available, that already tells that this keyword has at least hundreds of searches per month. The more continuous the graph looks like, the more search volume there is because the more data there is. And by the way, if there is no data available, which is actually very common, that is still not a red flag. First of all, before using trends, make sure to simplify your keyword as much as possible to give you a realistic idea of the search volume. So for instance, if your keyword is what are the best Photoshop alternatives in 2023, you should actually simplify it to something like Photoshop alternatives, because those two searches has the exact same search intent. After you have simplified your keyword, if you still don't see any data on Google Trends, that still doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't write about that topic or target that keyword, but it might mean that there is less than a couple of hundred searches per month for that keyword. So just remember, trends can give you a great idea of the volume and a relative volume of a keyword, but it doesn't really tell whether there's actually zero searches per month or for example, 200 searches per month. So take that with a bit of a grain of salt. Now, another thing that I like to do, especially if I'm targeting those very specific long tail keywords that I just mentioned, is to check how many times a Quora page has been viewed. So if there is a Quora page ranking high for your keyword, you can actually open up the page and see when it has been published and also how many reads it has. And this will give you actually a great idea of what types of search volumes you're going to get and what type of uh, traffic you're going to expect to your blog post. So let's say there's a Quora post that is five years of age and has like 10,000 reads. And it, assuming it has been ranking high for all that five years, you could expect to get like 2,000 visitors per year. And this is actually one of my favorite ways to estimate how many visitors I might have to my blog post. But the issue is that most of the time there is no Quora page on the top of the search results, so you're not going to be able to do this every time. Another great way to verify search volume is by using Google suggestions. Obviously, if you just use Google suggestions to find your keyword, this step makes absolutely no sense because that already told you that there indeed is search volume for that keyword. But if you found the keyword another way, or if you came up with it by yourself, this is a great way for you to verify whether that keyword actually has search volume or not. So basically, if Google suggests something, it always means that there is a ton of search volume. For instance, let's say you're in the badminton niche and you're considering writing a blog post such as how to properly dry badminton shoes. Make sure to check that Google suggests something similar when you're typing something like that on Google. So for example, if you type in something like how to dry badminton, are you going to see the shoes as the suggestion? Well, in this case, I am actually not seeing that. So that might mean that this topic is completely irrelevant and nobody's searching for that. Now that you know how to identify keywords that are worth targeting and to verify if there's actually search volume or not, let's do some competitive analysis before we write a blog post. The goal of this phase is to learn what's the level of competition for your keyword. So basically this will help you understand if there's actually any chances for you to rank high for that particular keyword and if there's actually any reason for you to spend time on writing that blog post. One of the most common things that I do to analyze the competition is by using Google once again. And to this, I use the all in title column operator. So basically this operator allows you to see how many blog posts are targeting your keyword. And notice that this operator is not 100% reliable too. So basically it will give you an idea whether there is like 100 or 1000 or 10,000 competing pages, but it's not like this keyword has exactly 578 competing blog posts. So you're going to get a ballpark estimate with this and that's exactly what you need. And once again, before you use this method, make sure to simplify your keyword. So for example, if you're going to target something like what are the best Photoshop alternatives of 2023, 
It actually simplifies the Photoshop alternatives because the search intents are exactly the same. Then just open up Google and type in all in title column followed by your keyword. Then hit enter and you're going to see the number of competing pages and blog posts. Now what I have found is that about 10 or 15% of the time this number is hidden for some reason or another, but most of the time you can get a result by doing this. And to give you an idea of what kinds of volumes you want to see here, I wouldn't usually go for keywords that have more than 1000 competing pages. But remember that this is not a hard and fast rule. Sometimes there might be blog posts that are so bad or for example those are news articles and there might be thousands of those but you can still have a relatively high chance for ranking high for that keyword. But then on the other hand there might be those very specific blog post topics that only have like a couple of hundred competing pages but those are so in-depth and so well written that you have absolutely no chances for ranking high for that topic either so this is also something that you should take with a bit of a grain of salt usually it gives you a great idea usually i rank high for keywords that have like a couple of hundred competing pages but i basically think i never ranked high for a keyword that has more than like 10,000 competing pages. Now, another way to find whether there is competition or not is by doing a Google search. So just type in your keyword into Google and hit enter and see what kinds of results pop up. A telltale sign of a low competition keyword is that if there's a ton of forum posts on the top of the search results. So basically, then there is so little competition that Google has to rely on those messy forum posts where anybody can post anything. And that's usually something that Google doesn't want to do if they, unless they absolutely have to. So if you see pages like Quora or Reddit at the top of the search results, that means that there's probably no competition, but still a relatively high search volume. And that might be a topic worth writing about. And also a simple Google search can identify those high competition keywords as well. So if there are tons of ads or other types of search features such as a carousel or a big map or something that eats up a lot of space in the top 10 search results, that might also mean that there is a ton of competition. For example, consider something like best hotels in Paris. You're going to see all these search features and ads before you're going to find the very first blog post. And last but not least, by doing a simple Google search, you can also identify whether there are those big key players at the top of the search results. So for example, if you see something like TechTarget or Furbs or Money.com or any like short, very notable and popular domain, that might mean that there's a ton of competition and that you might have a very hard time on ranking those keywords. So one more thing you want to do before you write a blog post or target a particular keyword is to understand the search intent. So this is closely related to the different types of keywords that I specified earlier. Now every single search has search intent. Most of the time this is obvious but not always. So for example the search intent of black tennis shoes is not to learn what are black tennis shoes but actually to see product catalogs and lists of different kinds of black tennis shoes to consider buying. But sometimes it is a bit trickier. For instance, consider something like how to tie shoelaces. Well, obviously the search intent is informational. The person who's searching for this is going to want to learn how to tie shoelaces. But the intent is to see a visual guide instead of reading a blog post. And that's why you mainly find those images or videos at the top of the search results on Google, even if you're doing a regular Google search. And this is big because by understanding the search intent, you actually know what type of content you should write. So for instance, you probably shouldn't write a blog post about how to tie shoelaces, but you should probably create a visual guide or video instead. And if you solely want to focus on blogging, you might not want to target those highly visual or video search intent queries, because no matter how good blog post you write, if you're not going to make a video or visual guide, you're probably never going to rank high for that key phrase. And this brings us to a very closely related topic. Make sure to understand Google's preferences for each keyword. Just do a simple Google search for your keyword and see what are the characteristics 
and typical blog posts that rank high for that keyword. So this is basically free data and gives you a blueprint for writing a blog post to target that particular keyword. So for instance, if all of the pages and blog posts that target your keyword have an image gallery at the beginning of the blog post, you should probably add one as well. Or for example, if there are those super lengthy and detailed guides on the top of the search results, that means you need to write an even longer and an even more detailed piece of content about that topic. So nonetheless, by using Google, you're going to see what Google values and appreciates with that keyword and what Google considers to be the best piece of content for that key phrase. And that gives you a blueprint for writing your blog post. And no, you're not going to copy from other people, but the characteristics and some elements can be from your competitors without being plagiarism. We're almost there, but there's one thing I want to mention, and that is to avoid being paralyzed by analysis. So thus far, I have probably taught you a ton of stuff you didn't know. And at this point, it might seem that keyword research is this process that takes like 30 minutes and it's super careful and pretty hazy and not that consistent or logical. But don't get stuck at analyzing your keywords. Just spend like a couple of minutes, like five to 10 minutes at most on each keyword and then just move on. For example, what I usually do is I find those blog post topics that is the keywords to target from Google suggestions. Then I just quickly search for those topics and check what kinds of topics come up in the search results. And then I just write the blog posts if those topics are something that have not too much competition. So basically I spend like two to five minutes at most. And the reason why I tell you to not get paralyzed by analysis is because there are many, many reasons for every single keyword to not target those. The more in-depth research you do, the more reasons you will find that will discourage you from writing. And that is not a good thing. You always need to write a ton of content if you want to build a successful blog. And this is not exact science. You don't know the exact search volumes and you don't know how many keywords you're going to rank high for. So don't pay too much attention to keyword research. The point of this guide was to show you absolutely everything you're ever going to need when it comes to doing keyword research. But most of the time, it is much, much, much more simpler than this. As long as the blog post is relevant to the people in your niche, you're good to go. If you're in doubt, just write the blog post. And let me share you a funny story. So me and my friend are operating this accommodation niche website here in Finland. Initially, we started with very, very long tail keywords that we had really great chances for ranking high for. But then we actually realized that why are we actually doing this research at all? Because at the end of the day, we want to cover the niche from A to Z by writing all the possible blog posts. So the website is all about rental cottages here in Finland, which is a big business here. And thus far we have written like 350 blog posts about different kinds of cottages in different regions of Finland. And we have done absolutely no keyword research because we just realized that we're going to spend as much as needed to actually cover the niche from A to Z and leave absolutely no stone unturned. So we're covering every single city and town that there is in Finland. And this highlights that it is not always even necessary to do the keyword research. But of course, this is because I already have a ton of experience as a blogger and this niche is relatively low competition here in Finland. So basically most of the time you want to do some research to identify whether there's too much competition and whether the topic is actually something that people care for. But if you become an expert and if you're very invested in your niche and already know the pain points and have a good hunch of the competition of your topics, you might actually be able to skip the keyword research altogether. And one more thing, do not optimize for keywords. I love to use the word keyword a lot because it's short and concise and everybody knows what it means. But actually, those are really not keywords. We're not writing for robots. What people type in to Google search engine is usually like a problem or question and they're looking for solutions. So all I'm trying to say here is that you should use keyword research to find those blog post topics. But when you get to writing, do not worry about keywords. Do not worry about any SEO stuff. 
don't worry about backlinks, keyword placements, keyword densities, LSI keywords. Just solve problems for people in your niche. Thank you so much for watching the video and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good day.